I have put together a perfect set of golf clubs for a mid handicap golfer. Everything in this selection is brand new this year. However, I'm also going to include cheaper options and the deals that you can find on the second hand market. A mid handicap golfer is in this range from a 10 to 20 handicap. This golfer is looking for something which offers forgiveness, but also playability. Not super game improvement irons and not those compacted blades reserved for the very best of golfers. First up putter and I've selected the Odyssey AI1 number seven, just a simply classic shape. It is a design which has been around for many years and has stood the test of time. But for your average mid handicap golfer, this is also a really good option because it's a mallet head. Now with a mallet head, which is quite a large footprint, manufacturers can push weight to the extremities and increase forgiveness. But with putters, to be honest, like you can buy into the tech. You can really believe what is being said. You can trust it to the absolute utmost, but everybody knows watching this, everybody knows who's played golf for a certain amount of time, a player who will hold putts using anything. And these new putters, they are a bit pricey. However, we have other options available as well in this mallet design. Now, if you wanted something which was a little bit more blade-like, so a little bit more like the putter that Tiger Woods uses, say for example, the Newport type of design, the classic pink answer style of putter, there are lots of options as well. However, I would say that most golfers if they don't consistently strike the center of a putter, going for a mallet headed design might be a better option. So this is a window which is in the bottom of the golf club and through this you can see how the face has little waves, it has little differences in thickness, in density. Now, what Odyssey say is that they've put into this club face thousands and thousands and thousands of iterations of every standard of golfer hitting putts. And what they've done is taken that data and made the face different thicknesses in those areas where most golfers strike from. Now, here's the key. What Odyssey say is that because a mid handicap golfer would strike not predominantly in the center, if you hit from the toe, hit from the heel, you'll still get the same amount of energy transfer from those locations and mentioned we have a mallet head which is going to be more forgiving and a little bit more resistant to twisting. Speed control is often more important than line. Now I know that sounds crazy but trust me the data backs this up. So having a putter which can transfer energy onto the ball even if you strike it from not in the center is absolutely key. Now putters are potentially the most varied club in the golf bag because as long as you have confidence with a putter it really doesn't matter. So Golf Bidder, the website that I'm using to look at secondhand clubs, they've been a channel partner for years, but this is not a sponsored video. I'm just using their website to show you some of the options that are out there. You see, Putter Tech really hasn't moved on much in the past decade, especially if it's a milled putter. I mean, for example, just, just look at this. So this is an, I'm just sticking to Odyssey. For $82.99, you can pick up this O-Works Black Hashtag 3T, which again, this would have been 200 quid when it was new. I mean, the tech on this putter, it's not gonna have degraded over time. The only thing you need to be wary of when you're buying a secondhand club is if the previous owner hasn't been too careful with it and it's a bit dinked up. But in this case, this looks great. And for the wedges, I've selected the Cleveland CBX4s. Now, this is not a type of wedge that I would have selected for a mid handicap golfer 18 months ago, but I have had a change of heart. Because this wedge from Cleveland, who are a renowned wedge maker, I don't think we need to worry about the overall quality of these clubs. But as I put it behind the ball, there is no doubt that, they... I mean, they're a big club. Do it for me. But that is partially the point of these wedges. They're designed for if you're using a cavity back set of irons, these are gonna offer a little bit more forgiveness and a little bit more help. They are still a precision tool, but they just offer a little bit more guidance. They give you a helping hand. And they also have a lot of the same features as Cleveland's more better player designed wedges. I'm gonna hit that goose. Now you might be looking at these shots and thinking, Pete, your distance control is just absolutely garbage. And you know what? You might be right. However, a feature of these wedges is that they do go a little bit further because it's not a standard wedge design. 
we have a bit of a hollow construction in here. We have a design which, like I said, is reminiscent of many of the cavity back irons out there at the moment. So let's try and take a little distance off, land it short. Oh, stop. Oh, did you see the spin on that? <laughs> You'll notice on this wedge, the actual sole is big. It's like pretty wide, it's pretty chunky. It's got like a low density core in here, which allows that blending from a cavity back iron into a wedge a little bit more seamlessly. The reason that I'm more inclined to recommend this for a mid handicap golfer and not just a high handicap golfer is around the green, it still seems to be versatile. Like it still seems that you can play a wide variety of shots. I could just stop hitting it so hard. It is a little bit of a different sensation when struck. So it just kind of like flies off the face with a little bit more momentum. And the, the feeling is a lot more springy. It's quite strange for a wedge, but in this case, strange doesn't mean bad. Strange means good. So let's just open up that face a little bit. Let's see if I can just slide it underneath. Yeah, nice. Really good. Lots of stopping power as well. The faces of these wedges are actually really complex. They've got this zip core tech and it's kind of like grooves within grooves. And oddly enough on this, there's a lot more milling towards the toe of the club. So I'm imagining that Cleveland have said, okay, so players are going to strike a little bit more from the toe. Let's give them a little bit more relief if those strikes really do wander over. Now, there are quite a few options within this wedge space. Obviously, Vokies, I mean, they're elite. That's what I have in my bag, but there are a lot of different golfers who can use them. If you did want something a little bit different, maybe check out Ping or Mizuno. They often produce really good wedges, which are a little bit underappreciated. For the irons, I've selected the Titleist T200s. And I quote, the tour proven player's distance iron with the ideal shape, performance and dramatically enhanced feel. T200 is built for the player who wants distance help without sacrificing looks, feel, trajectory or stopping power. Now, the reason that I have quoted and read out that marketing guff is for once, I absolutely 100% and unequivocally agree with everything that has just been said. So these irons, I, I must admit, when I first tested them up in Scotland last year, I was so, so impressed. Like they are really, really good iron. I mean, Titleist make very, very good iron products that I don't think they're underrated, but I think maybe they don't shout about them to the same extent that maybe some other manufacturers do. And they get lost in the conversation every now and again. But these irons, oh my word, my word. A little bit. The strike and the feel, and this is going to sound so nerdy, and I know it's going to sound nerdy, but you're going to forgive me because you're beautiful people. The turf interaction with this club is just like, the way it, mm. <laughs> One of the reasons that the turf interaction <laughs> is so good is because this sole is based on a Vokey design. So the wedges, you know, it know they know what they're doing with their wedges and with their turf interaction. And I think I need to stop saying that word now. But the sound and the feel of these things is just, is so responsive. It looks like a slightly better player's iron, but to be honest with you, I think a lot of golfers can use this iron very, very comfortably. Some other options within this range. So for me, PXG, they've really stepped up their game recently. But one of the most consistent performers in this mid handicap range is the P790 from TaylorMade. You know, this is an iron which they've brought out kind of again and again, different iterations across the last, what, kind of five, eight years. And every single time, mid-handicap golfers absolutely love this club. But one I need to consider, which is sometimes overlooked within this mid-handicap range, are Mizunos. So I've got the Mizuno Pro 245 up here, 
And what a lot of people imagine is when they get a Mizuno iron, it has to be a blade, it has to be a muscle back. But there are also a lot of good options within this range from Mizuno to give a player a little bit more forgiveness. Now these irons all have something in common. They're mostly hollow headed constructions. And this is a trend that we've been seeing develop over the last five years. Because of that, the second hand market for hollow headed irons is absolutely huge and you can get some fantastic deals. Fairway Woods, and we're gonna start by suggesting recommending nay just imparting some wisdom this part of the bag you need to think about this a little bit more outside the box so for many years golfers would have a driver they'd have a three wood and then it kind of just end up getting towards the long irons with fairway woods now there are so many more options and i would recommend from a mid to high to even a low handicap golfer really thinking about if you need say a three wood because three woods really do go so much further than they used to and if you do have a three wood is it better to have a five wood and a seven wood rather than even say a four iron is it better to have hybrids in this section of the bag as well for a mid handicap golfer i would actually recommend getting the driver of course having a three wood for that extra distance option but then potentially having a five wood maybe having a seven wood or if not seven wood a hybrid at the top end of the bag to replace long irons. The technology which is available now, it is so much better in this area and it should be taken advantage of. Now, hopefully you found that information useful. Something else that I found so useful over the last uh, decade of doing this is if you subscribe to the YouTube channel, we are now on 600,000 followers here on YouTube on the main channel. Thank you so much so much everyone who's subscribed so far now fairway woods ping always do a really good job um, for mid handicap golfers but this year clubs which i really have enjoyed using so far that is case and point as i absolutely steer hip on down the fairway are the tailor-made qi10 max range so i'm actually thinking of putting the tour range of the qi10 in my bag as far as fairway woods go the max range is just so confidence inspiring when you stick it behind the ball. It's got a massive footprint. It looks huge. But because it's also very shallow in the face, so from the toe to the top line of the club, it's not very big. It feels like you can get the ball up in the air really easily. That's straight down the middle. Those two have landed next to each other, by the way. But if you are a mid handicap golfer and you look down at the QI10 Max and you think it's just too big, you know, I, I just can't quite get my head around it. The reason I've selected the QI10 range is that they have a option. So this is the standard QI10 fairway wood. This is 15 degrees compared to 16 degrees in the max. Again, I think the max is 16 just to help it get up in the air a little bit more. But straight away behind the ball, this club is deeper and it will have a little bit more of a penetrating, boring flight. that little bit lower a little bit stronger but to hit this club effectively you're going to need a little bit more ball speed you're going to have to have more confidence with your fairway wood swing right on to the driver now it's actually been a really difficult decision this year because there's been so many good new products come out but also within the driver market if you want a deal Second hand is an absolute gold mine. But the second hand market here is elite and worth a look. Like just search for drivers from 2021. So three years ago, and they're gonna be netting about a third off the original price. And one of the advantages with many of the modern drivers is that they've got interchangeable shafts. So if you do know your specs, you can take a shaft that you like or a shaft you've been fitted into and then put that into a new driver. It's not ideal. Getting fit for a new driver is one of the best things you can do. It's fun, it's enjoyable, and you get something brand new and shiny. But if you're comfortable, you know your loft, you know your specs, you know your shaft sleeves, all the rest of it, this is a really, really good opportunity to save some money. So the final club going into this mid handicap bag is the driver. And for this year, I have selected the Paradigm A I Smoke from Callaway. Oh, beauty. Now, as mentioned, uh, to be honest, this year, I could have picked so many of the drivers which are out there. 
the Ping G430 Max 10K, which has gone in my bag. I could have put that in. The Cobra, I've started to vibe with a little bit more. There's just there's so many. But the reason I put the smoke in is because as an all-rounder, so from looks, from feel, forgiveness, playability, distance, this ticks every single box. Also, it has a decent measure of adaptability. So you have this sliding weight at the back. You've got the shaft sleeve, which you can adapt. Now, if you're going to buy a new driver, I would always recommend getting fit because it's through a fitter, it's through their expert advice that you're going to be able to get the most out of a new club and the most out of a driver. Now, Odyssey and Callaway, they are the same company and they've taken that artificial intelligence face that we saw with the putter and they've applied it to the driver. Well, they've taken it from the driver and they've applied it to the putter. But again, it has different face thicknesses depending on where you strike it with the input from thousands and thousands of regular golfers, including many people watching this mid handicap players. And there we have it, our completed bag for a mid handicap golfer. The only thing that I've left out here is the golf ball. Now we've done a video recently on the best premium golf ball, which you can find here. But if you want to see us do one for a more average golf audience, get down into those comments and let us know. And as mentioned, if you haven't subscribed already, please do now.